final experiment was the 2024 expedition to Antarctica, designed to test a central claim of flat earth theory. It took place over four days from December 14th to 17th in 2024. The trip was organized by Pastor Will Duffy and included a team of nine. Duffy himself, along with eight content creators on both sides of the Shape of the Earth debate. For their travel to Antarctica, each participant carried GPS devices that continuously updated their coordinates, allowing observers to monitor their exact locations throughout the journey. Additionally, the charter flight from Punta Arenas, Chile to Union Glacier Camp in Antarctica was tracked live via Flight Radar 24 providing transparent and verifiable flight data. These measures were designed to counter claims that the expedition was staged or that the participants never actually reach Antarctica. This mission was chosen because Duffy had realized in his conversations with flat earthers that if the sun could be observed continuously in the Antarctic sky for 24 hours, it would directly contradict the flat earth claims. So he arranged the expedition to settle the matter once and for all hence the name The Final Experiment. This marked the first time in history that modern flat earthers traveled to Antarctica for a direct test of their beliefs. According to the flat earth model, Antarctica is not a continent at the South Pole, but rather a ring-shaped ice boundary encircling the world. In this model, the sun behaves like a spotlight moving around the Earth's surface, so it can't remain visible in Antarctica for 24 hours. It would have to rise and set like it does everywhere else all over the world. To put that to the test, the team brought a Starlink satellite internet kit and live streamed the midnight sun for several days. The flat earthers on the team admitted the phenomenon was real, witnessing it with their own eyes. So obviously you all know Jaron Campanella of Jaronism, one of the most popular flat earth YouTube channels. Not for long. <laughs> all right guys, uh, sometimes you are wrong in life. And I thought that there was no 24 hour sun. In fact, I was pretty sure of it. But uh, I respect Will Duffy for being a stand up guy, at least in the way that he kept saying it was true. I kept saying it wasn't. He said, you wanna go, I'll take you and brought me here and it's uh, a fact. The sun uh, does circle you in the south. So what does that mean? You guys are gonna have to figure that out yourself. Uh, don't listen to my beliefs or my opinion. It shouldn't matter to you, but at least you should be able to accept uh, that the sun does exactly what these guys said as far as circles the uh, southern continent. So I honestly believe there was no 24 hour sun. I honestly now believe there is. That's it. Their cameras were set up to track the sun's position through the night. The live feeds that were broadcast on YouTube and social media showed the sun skimming just above the horizon at local midnight before rising higher again, never setting. This is what's known as a midnight sun. A second reason for choosing Antarctica specifically, rather than a northern location like Alaska or Norway where the midnight sun is also visible, was the belief among flat earthers that regular people cannot access Antarctica. You can get a flight, you can get it booked, get down there, they're gonna take a picture with a penguin, they'll take you to a ceremonial pole. But you say, hey dude, I wanna grab a backpack, I wanna go explore, you won't be allowed. Really? It is guarded big time. 40 countries signed a peace treaty and it's the longest standing peace treaty that no one's ever broken. And it says that only military and science can go there. But you're not allowed to go backpack and hang out. Many in that movement believe governments were restricting access to the so-called ice wall at the edge of the world hiding the truth about a flat earth from the public. But the fact that Duffy could arrange private travel for the team shattered this narrative. The evidence of the midnight sun caused many truth seekers to abandon their flat earth beliefs, but not all. Some fairly acknowledged that while this data point does clearly contradict the flat earth model, they wanted to explore further before drawing new conclusions. Others, however, exposed their bias, clinging to the theory at all costs. Dean Odell, a pastor and prominent flat earth preacher who declined Duffy's invitation to join the expedition, all expenses paid, even claimed in a sermon afterward that Satan himself might have created a fake sun to deceive the team. Let me just say this at, at the outset here about the so-called final experiment and them allegedly seeing the sun move in a circle around them in Antarctica. Let me just go and tell you right now. 
You don't think Satan could pull that off? Robbie Davidson later summarized the Flat Earth backlash to the data. Some claim the team never even went to Antarctica. Others insisted they did, but filmed it all in a CGI studio, and a slew of absurd, even borderline insane conspiracy theories popped up to reject the reality of their boots on the ground evidence. Some even went so far as to be convinced that it was Satan himself going around the TFE team as a deception, rather than just admit it was literally the actual sun they observed on the continent. Many flat earthers now shrug and say it doesn't matter, even though a core pillar of our belief I was there from the start, it was that a 24 hour sun in Antarctica couldn't exist. We dismissed it as impossible, but the team proved it's real. By the end of the four day final experiment expedition, the sun never set a single time, exactly what is expected on a globe and completely incompatible with flat earth cosmology. Don't stop here, finish the video on YouTube to learn even more about this topic.